In a previous video, we proved the monotone sequence theorem. Now we wanna look at an example. So let's recall what the theorem says. So let's suppose that A sub N is a monotone sequence. In other words, it's increasing or decreasing, but it can't like increase some of the time and decrease some of the time. It's either or. Then A N happens to converge if and only if it is bounded. Okay, so we wanna look at an example and the example is a recursive sequence. And in fact, the monotone sequence theorem is a really good way to find the limit of a recursive sequence. So let's define it by a sub one is equal to the square root of two, and then a sub n plus one is equal to the square root of two plus a n for n bigger than or equal to one. And so notice that that tells us that we have a sub two is equal to the square root of two plus a one, and that's all under the radical. Great, and then notice that that means that a three is equal to the square root of two plus a two, but we can write that kind of as a nested radical. That's gonna be the square root of two plus the square root of two plus a one. Good. And then we could like keep going and essentially what we're getting is some infinitely nested radical. So that's what we're defining by this recursive sequence. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna use the monotone sequence theorem. So that means we need to show that this thing is bounded and monotone. So we'll first show that it's bounded and we'll begin by noticing that it's bounded below by one. Notice that the square root of two is bigger than one, it's like 1.4 something. And then everything is getting bigger after that. And so we haven't shown carefully that it's increasing monotonically after that, but they are all bigger than the square root of two given that you're adding something to this two under the radical. So it stands to reason that we have one is less than a n. Good. And then maybe you could do some numerical calculations to get a feel for what the upper bound should be, but you'll see that the upper bound will be two. Okay, great. And now we're gonna prove this by induction. And so that means we need a base case. And our base case will be the n equals one case, as that's the first term from our sequence. But notice that n equals one case is okay, and that's because the square root of two is strictly between one and two. So we're good to go there. Great, now let's go ahead and make an induction hypothesis. So our induction hypothesis will be, suppose that this statement is true for some k. So suppose for some k bigger than or equal to one, we have one is less than a k, which is less than two. Now what we wanna do is take that inequality and mold it until we have an a k plus one in the middle part. So let's see how we can do that. So I'll just go ahead and bring this down. I'll have one is less than a k, which is less than two, good. Now what I wanna do is maybe I will add two to all parts of this inequality. So I can add two here, I can add two here, and I can add two here, great. So notice that gives me a new inequality, which is three is less than two plus a k, which is less than four, great. But now I'll point out that three is most definitely bigger than one, and now we can take the square root of this extreme left-hand side, this middle part, and this right-hand side, and that'll give us the square root of one, which is one, is less than the square root of two plus a sub k, which is less than the square root of four, which is two. But notice that this interior right here is exactly a k plus one. So assuming that this statement was true for a sub k, that plus two is outside of the index, We've shown that it's true for AK plus one. In other words, we finished our induction proof that this thing is bounded. Okay, so I'll go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll show that it's a monotone sequence as well. So we just got done showing that this was a bounded sequence. Now we wanna show that it's monotone and we're gonna in fact show that it's monotonically increasing because it seems to be getting bigger as we move forward into the sequence. You could do some experimental calculations to see that, but it's not so hard to guess in this case. So in other words, what we want to show is that a sub n plus one is bigger than a sub n and this needs to be true for all natural numbers n. Okay, good. 
So let's see how we can do that. So what I want to do is start with this inequality, which we proved earlier, which is a n is less than two. Now I want to multiply both parts of this inequality by a n. That's going to give me a n squared is less than two times a n. Great. And now I'm going to rewrite that a little bit. I'm going to rewrite this as a n squared is less than a n plus a n. That's obviously two times a n. But now I can put an inequality over here and change one of these with a two, again, using this guy up here, which we proved. So that is less than two plus a n. Great. So now let's look at the extreme left and right hand side of this. And notice that after taking the square root, we'll have a n is less than the square root of two plus a n, but that's exactly equal to a n plus one. But what that tells us is that this thing is an increasing sequence. Notice the nth term is less than the n plus first term. So in other words, we've got this thing is monotone. So it's bounded, it's monotone, so that means it has a limit. So let's clean this up and we'll find that limit. Okay, so we just got done proving that this was a monotonic bounded sequence. So what that tells us is that it converges. So let's go ahead and find the limit. So let's take the limit as n goes to infinity of a n, and maybe we'll set that equal to L. We don't know what L is, but we know that that limit exists. Now by something which is commonly um, a homework exercise, you, we know that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus one is also equal to L. Great. So now what I want to do is use our recursion to express a n plus one in terms of a n. So now that's going to give us the limit as n goes to infinity of the square root of two plus a n equals L. So that's just rewriting this line right here. And then again, a mixture of something we did in a previous video and a common like in class or homework exercise tells us that we can bring this limit inside the square root under certain circumstances and we're actually good to go under this circumstance. So that gives us the square root of the limit as n goes to infinity of two plus a n equals L. But now, again, by some algebraic properties of limits, this time it's all proved in a previous video. We know the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 plus a n is just going to be 2 plus L. So, but that's still under a radical. But that gives us an equation, the square root of 2 plus L equals L. But that's pretty easy to turn into a quadratic equation that we can solve for L. So notice that's going to give us the L squared equals l plus 2, or in other words, we have l squared minus l minus 2 equals 0. We can go ahead and factor that left-hand side. Notice that factors like l minus 2, l plus 1 equals 0, which gives us two solutions, l equals 2 or l equals minus 1. But given the fact that our sequence is always between 1 and 2, we know that L has to be equal to two. So in other words, we've shown that the limit of this sequence is equal to two. Okay, so I think that's a good place to stop. We'll probably do another one of these in an upcoming video.